I've been working with Vite for a long time and I see the same mistakes over and over again from developers who use Vite, especially new developers when they're dealing with imports. So I have a application here. Let me do a quick run through of it. You can enter data in here. So hello world. You can delete data at any time. It lists on this page here. This is all backed by Amplify Gen 2, which is a really straightforward way to create full stack apps backed by AWS. It's all on demand as well. And to take a look at that, I just ran a, a few commands in the command line. I ran this npm create amplify at latest, and that created the backend infrastructure for me, and then npx amplify sandbox, and that started it. If I look at my package.json, I have this AWS amplify library that we recently updated. You don't have to have any additional configurations inside Vite like you used to, and it just works. And to give you a quick idea what the backend looks like, if I come into the amplify resource file, you can see here, I've created a data model here. So basically uh, you can think of it like an app sync table that's a to-do table. I just have one content and everything's public. Then using that latest AWS library, I can do all these really nice things like list the to-dos here. I could do creates and deletes. I'll leave a link to this repository if you wanna learn a little bit more of how this gets up and running. One thing that I see a lot of V developers doing is you can look at all these imports and they're all relative imports. And I have .utils, .components post. If I go to my use posts, sometimes I have relative paths that are like two or three deep. So there's a better solution to this and this is to use aliases. So let's refactor this app so it uses aliases and see what that looks like. So I'm going to go into my Vite config here and then right underneath my plugins I'm going to add something called resolve and then underneath resolve I'm going to add an alias and this alias here is going to have an at symbol and then I'm going to add a path in. Now I have to add in an import for my path and then I'll have path.resolve dollar underscore underscore dir name the directory. Sometimes you'll get an error in your in your VS code that you don't have the correct types. So to fix that, I just need to come here, I'll npm and it's a development dependency types node. So make sure you install this, otherwise your VS code might complain to you. Now you're almost done here. So this, what this is saying in this alias is that anytime you use this at symbol inside your components, that it will map to dollar dot slash source. But you can certainly add more. And I've seen uh, a good practice too, is if you have a lot of components to add like a components one or you know whatever you want into here. So you can have multiple different aliases or different symbols that mean different parts of your app. If you go back to your app TSX and you just try to change this to at, you're going to get a red squiggly line in your VS code. And this tells you that things aren't all the way set up because it doesn't recognize where this is. So the next thing you need to do before you make this change is to go into your TS config file. And then you need to add inside your compiler options, add in pass, pass. And then in the pass you add and then you can put what path it, it goes to. So this would be source star. Now, if I go back to my app TSX file and I can change it now to this at symbol, I'll do the same thing for my use posts. And I feel like it's just a little bit nicer. Uh, and you can certainly create more aliases for things that are deeply nested rather than use these relative paths everywhere. Another common issue I see is how Vite deals with type checking. So let me show you an example. Let's say uh, I know in my app TSX I have this set post and it defaults to a string. But what happens if I want to add a number in there instead? Well, if I go to my use post here and I have right after I add a post, I clear this input here, but let's say I wanted to set it to something and I accidentally, instead of setting it to a string, which it's supposed to be, I set it to, I don't know, a number. And you could see right away and I saved it. VS code is telling me, Hey, there's something wrong here. This is a type string and you put a type number and that doesn't work with the set state action. However, if I look at my console here, my Vite, everything is, seems to work fine. And if I type something in here, it actually is showing this number a thousand. It's doing this type coercion. It's basically changing it to a string. It's adding it to this input, but it's not catching it in development mode. Now, if I build it, it will catch it and it'll get an, I'll get an error. But you could tell if you're like new to Vite, you probably think, well, why isn't my console saying anything in dev developer mode? And what often happens in very large projects, you'll go into 20 different files, 
You'll make little changes here and there. Your VS Code may not update. I don't know if you've ever had this happen where your VS Code is not type checking correctly or there's some kind of issue. And then you think everything will work fine. And then when you build for production the next day or two days later, it fails because something's wrong with the types. And if you look at the package.json, you can see the package.json is doing this TSC. So it is compiling the TypeScript and it's finding the error at that point, but it doesn't happen in dev mode. So that, that's obviously an issue. So basically that's how Vite works and that's how it keeps it going fast. But there is a nice plugin that you can use to help fix that issue if it is a problem. You can run npm ID, it's a development dependency for Vite plugin checker. And this will add in a plugin that we can do additional check, checks on. And now I'm gonna go back into my Vite config and where it says plugins, I'm gonna add in checker. I'm gonna have to import it in, import in checker. And then it's asking for a few options here. And for, if you're using Vue, you can use Vue TSC and true, but since we're in a React app, we're just gonna uh, change this TypeScript to true. And now if I run npm run dev and I refresh the page, you can see it found an error right here. So it says right here, this argument type number is not assigned well to parameter and set post 1000. You can even see it on inside the window here. So this is a really nice plugin. I would recommend to use it, especially in more complex projects. You can just add this checker TypeScript true. So the last nice feature of Vite that I wanna show you guys is how you can lazy load components or features or utilities. Sometimes this is called code splitting directly inside your components and this works once again, for Vue, React, any of the Vite apps that you wanna use. Imagine a scenario that you have a component that is pretty complex and you don't want it to be loaded as soon as the app loads or as soon as that page loads, but you wanna maybe have it loaded uh, when a certain action happens or when some scrolls down. So let me show you this. Uh, I have my same app here and I imported in some called Suspense into my React app. And now I'm going to create a new use state. And this is for this use state is for lazy info, set lazy info, and we'll assume that this lazy info is a component and it's a JSX element. And then we're gonna add a new use effect and we're gonna set it to default to just say default. So uh, I'm gonna add a handle click, a click handler. And so this syntax right here, we can import in at components add and then we, it's thenable. And then we'll set the, the lazy info to the module.default. So this handle click will add this into a button. We'll assume when the button clicks, then it'll do this action and it'll import this component in. And so it won't be included in the, in the bundle size until it's dynamically imported in this way. So now let's add in the button. We're gonna add in a button and it's gonna have the on click handler, go to the handle click. We'll add some nice Tailwind CSS classes. And it's gonna have add complex component is the button name. And then we're just gonna have this suspense. And so this will load uh, as after, af after it comes available. And so if it's not available, it'll just show null. So if we did everything correctly and we save it, you can see here now I have this new add complex component. I click on it and here it is, complex component. And I didn't show you this, but the complex component is really this one right here. And all it does is <laughs> say complex component. But let's assume that it's doing something magical and it's a lot of, code in here. Those are three really nice things about Vite. So let me know if you guys want to see more neat things with Vite and some things I've seen in the past. Also include this whole repository in. And if you made it to this far in the video, thank you so much. Make sure you go into the description and sign up for my mailing list and you can learn about when I create videos. Thanks.